magic items! They're incredibly fun to find, and even cooler when you see an enemy use one, because you immediately know how to get it. Today I'll be focusing on a few sets of magic armor and shields, and show you why you need to be careful when handing them out. Look at that! DMing content! Welcome to Pack Tactics, where the best offense is a good defense. So you may be wondering, what items am I even talking about? And that is pretty simple to answer. Plus X armor and plus X shields. But Cobalt, what does plus X even mean? Well, it's basically just a substitute of any number that gets added as a bonus to AC. Really, the DMG just goes to plus three. So I'll be focusing on that and lower. This is what their entries look like. You have a bonus to AC while wearing this armor. The bonus is determined by its rarity. While holding this shield, you have a bonus to AC determined by the shield's rarity. This bonus is in addition to the shield's normal bonus to AC. Ah! That reminds me, let me go on a quick side tangent here because I feel it's worth bringing up. This is what the Sage Advice Compendium says about holding this shield. Can you gain the magical bonus of a plus two shield if you are holding the shield without taking an action to don it? Yes, but only the magical plus two, which you gain while holding the shield. In contrast, you gain the shield's non-magical AC bonus only if you use your action to don the shield as normal. So what happens if... No. It, it was not meant to be. So yeah, um, let's get back to the topic at hand. Kobold, why should I be careful when giving away magic armor? Right, well, the big reason, at least for me, is that the higher someone's AC is, the more it makes the one additional point of AC more valuable. Kobold, that's not right! It just reduces hit chance by 5% for each point! Kobold, you're just a noob! Well... Yes, you sound like me like a year ago now, but before I explain, I'll share a lot of what Tabletop Builds has written in their Squishy Caster article. So go check that out too, please. Let's not just look at hit chance, but rather another metric, attacks or attack rolls per hit. So for example, an ooze might need an average of 5 attacks to hit me, but an ogre needs 2. This is not based on math by the way, it's just an example to show what I mean. Let's say we have two casters. A bard, I'll play that role, and a wizard, that's you Gator. Gator is a dirty mint maxer and has armor dipped a level into peace cleric, so he is wearing half plate for 15 plus 2 AC plus another 2 for a shield for a total of 19 AC. Meanwhile, I'm just using what was given to me. Studded leather for 12 plus 3 from dexterity is 15 AC. Let's see what happens when Gator gets better armor and what happens when I get better armor. Oh no! Gator, a stone giant, is throwing rocks at you! Watch out! So Gator normally has 19 AC and a stone giant has a plus 9 to hit with his rock throws. That means before they would have had a 55% chance to hit. Now with a plus 1 set of half plate armor, it's 50%. A linear reduction of 5% as expected. Now let's look at the amount of attacks per hit. We have how often an attack hits, so we basically need the opposite. How many attacks you need for a hit. For 19 AC, it would be 1 divided by 0 0.55 for 1.82. For 20 AC, that's 1 divided by 0 0.5 for 2 attacks per hit. Sorry Gator, a practical example, this stone giant only needs one, as it is just an average. So for Gator, a 5 percentage point decrease into hit chance plus 1 AC really means about a 10% increase in survivability. Now for how much it would help me, against 15 AC, a plus 9 to hit would have a 75% chance to hit me. With plus 1 studded leather, I would have 16 AC, so a 70% chance 
chance to hit for the stone giant. Now we go from 1 divided by 0 0.75, which is 1.33 attacks per hit, to 1 divided by 0 0.70, which is 1.43. This is only a 7.5% increase. What I'm trying to show you is that giving your party magical armor might be fine if they have low AC, but once you are dealing with high ACs like gators, things get a bit extreme, especially if you consider that gator can cast the shield spell if he feels like it. That would make a lot less attacks hit because his AC is again so much higher. If you want to know the mathematical reason for this, you just have to look at the relationship. The hit chance decreases linearly with AC, but when you take the inverse, it becomes super linear. It grows faster than linear. For more details, of course, check out the article. So why don't you just buff the enemies in turn? Well, first of all, like I showed you before, not all plus one AC increases through magic armor are created equally. Some players are just going to feel more from the enemy's buffs than others. Secondly, this is just bloating numbers. You increase your party's AC, and then you need to increase the enemies to hit, and then you want to increase your party's AC, and then, well, you get it. There's no real good reason to do this. There are countless other cool items to give your party instead, like the ones that don't make the play experience worse. There's also the off chance if there are multiple people that use the same type of armor that they might get jealous or something when another person gets the new cool armor. But there are some other underlying problems there, and that is not something I need to deal with, luckily. If you really want to give people plus X armor, give it to those with low AC to buff them up to the other people in the party. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. I never hand them out. <gasps> Gator, don't open that! No! Cobalt, I feel funny! This video is sponsored by One More Multiverse, a super cool VTT that uses pixel art. Here, Gator, have a massive tub of ice cream. <gasps> Oh my god! Good, he's distracted. Now, what makes this program stand out from other VTTs is it feels like playing a video game, so it's incredibly easy to understand. They call it an OMMRPG, a video game like tabletop role playing game experience. It's not just battle maps and some tokens, it's more than that. There's a built-in tutorial on how to use this program, and it guides you like a video game. It's a little adventure. You create your avatar and walk around using different VTT tools. It's a brilliant idea. Now, OMM are releasing a wildly new adaptation of Blades in the Dark called Blades x OMM. Just so you know, Blades is a tabletop role-playing game about doing crime in an occult world. You play as scoundrels pursued by gangs and ghosts alike. It's going to have more than 120 interactive levels for you to explore. You can rob an art museum, fight on top of a train, and go to parties. You can even create your own levels. I think it's fun making levels. They have over 3,000 custom art assets, hundreds of custom ability animations, and hundreds of characters for you to use. For you players out there, this is super easy. You join a game, you create your avatar right away, then you create your character sheet, and boom, you're ready to play. Blades X OMM is now available for pre-order and will eventually come out on the 13th of October. This is their first game! I can't wait to explore this setting visually and learn a new role-playing system. I highly recommend you check it out. There's a link in the description that helps me too. Playing the fun tutorial is completely free. And if you like what you see, they hope to earn your purchase! Anyways, thank you for watching. Now it's ice cream time! Bye-bye!